Hi everybody, my name's Tim and uh, I teach anatomy and physiology in a, at a college in Wisconsin and I'm going to explain to you very simply how calcium channel blockers work. I watched a couple of videos and uh, to be perfectly honest, um, they made me crazy. So. I'm going to try and give you some good information and hopefully I can make this uh, really understandable to you. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> First of all, one of the things you got to understand is everything in the body happens at the level of the cell and the capillary. Whether it be a capillary of the body that supplies a cell or a pulmonary capillary in the alveoli. That's the only place in the body that nutrients and gases are exchanged. It's really that simple. The other thing you need to know is that the capillary is one cell membrane thick. And a cell also are one cell membrane thick. So <clears throat> here's the deal. Here's the cell. Here's what cell it is. There's stuff in the cell. And there's stuff in the blood. I don't really differentiate between the interstitial space and the capillary. To me, it don't make no never mind. It's either inside the cell or it's in the blood. Now here, this is critical. Because different cells do different things, they're going to need different stuff from the blood. Who cares what it is, right? There's chemical X, like in the Powerpuff Girls. Remember that? And chemical X wants to go into the cell. Now, if chemical X can't go from the capillary through the cell membrane into the cell because it's not permeable, but chemical X has to get into the cell, there's got to be a way for chemical X to get into the cell. So whoever thunked this up had it going on. So embedded in the cell membrane are these little channels. I'll make them green. So if chemical X can't simply go from the blood into the cell, there's got to be a way for it to get into the cell. So if we erase chemical X and instead we make it calcium, I'm left handed, my handwriting ain't that good. That's a calcium. It looks like carbon dioxide. I'll work on that. That's terrible. Hold on. So watch. So calcium, it's got to go from the blood into the cell. The only way it can get into the cell is by going through a specific protein channel. And again, you're not going to believe this. Called a calcium channel. <clears throat> Write this down. Tattoo it someplace. Because this is hugely important. I'm going to write it down for you because it's so important. The most important element in muscular contraction. is calcium. You got to know this. Here's the other thing. Second tattoo someplace. Watch. And watch how simple this is. 
And I don't know why they don't explain it to you this way, but I'm going to try. So here we go. <clears throat> the heart and blood vessels. You're not going to believe this. They're made of muscle. What's the most important element in muscular contraction? Bam. Calcium. Here's the other thing. You get these three things, this is going to open up to you. The heart and blood vessels, because they're made of muscle, but here's the kicker. The heart and blood vessels, arteries and veins, rely almost exclusively on calcium from the blood to contract. So, <clears throat> what are arteries and veins made out of? They're made out of muscle. So if you look, there we go. Make it red for an artery. Here's an artery. What's the wall made out of? Muscle. Where does the artery get the calcium from to contract? It gets it from the blood. The blood's right here, right? You sever an artery, blood spurtulates out of that hole. That's where the calcium is. Can calcium willy-nilly go from the blood into the muscular wall of the artery? The answer is no. How does it get in there? Here we go. This is a killer. It has to go through a specific calcium ion channel that make up those muscle cells. And this is the important piece. And when calcium from the blood gets into the muscular wall of the artery, it causes that muscular wall to contract. And when it contracts, what happens to the diameter of the artery? It gets smaller. And now you got to pump that same amount of blood through arteries that are smaller. That means that your little left ventricle has got to contract harder got to develop more pressure. So now you got high blood pressure. So you go to the doctor. Doctor takes your blood pressure. Doctor says, your blood pressure is 240 over 90. And then you think to yourself, BFL. That's, that's bad for me. So the doctor says, hey, don't worry about it. I went to school, learned about this stuff. So watch. I'm going to give you a medicine that prevents calcium from getting into the muscular wall of the artery. I'm going to give you a medicine that blocks calcium channels in your arteries. So what are your arteries going to do if calcium can't get in there? They're going to dilate. And now your little left ventricle doesn't have to generate as much pressure to get that same amount of blood through a bigger opening. That's how calcium channel blockers work in terms of controlling blood pressure. The bottom line is to control blood pressure, Physicians control the diameter of arteries. Next, I'll show you how diuretics work. All right? You guys be good. Study hard, too. All right? And read the textbook. My students must have uh, known intuitively what I read in a journal, that reading a textbook can cause cancer. That's probably why they don't read it. 
I'm just saying. Here's the other thing. The reason they make textbooks so difficult to understand is you wouldn't need me to explain it to you. All right? Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed.